Hey everyone, this is Jason Johnson at the University of Kentucky. Today, we are going to look at how to schedule Zoom meetings through Canvas for online learning. Now, there are at least two different ways you can run your Zoom meetings. One is just to uh, basically create the meeting and send out the link individually after you've created the meeting. The second way is to actually uh, create the Zoom meeting directly in Canvas and having all the links and videos and everything housed right there in Canvas. So we're going to look at that way today. Uh, first, you want to make sure that you've signed in at least one time. Now for University of Kentucky, the address it is uky.zoom.us to be able to sign in to Zoom and to uh, make sure that your account is set up and ready to go. We'll come back later on to some of these features that are, are in the sign up here. Um, but for now, we're going to look at setting up Zoom in your Canvas shell. The first thing you want to do in your Canvas shell is actually add the Zoom tab onto the left-hand side. You do that by going down to Settings. You then find the Zoom tab, bring it up here. You can also right-click and enable it. Make sure you hit Save at the bottom. Now, on the left-hand side of your course, you will see a Zoom tab. When you click on that, it will automatically log you into your Zoom account if you have set up your account previously, and it will give you these various tabs. Now, it will show you the upcoming meetings, previous meetings, personal meeting rooms, as well as your cloud recordings. Now, first, it might seem a little strange to have your account set up right here in your Canvas shell, but you can see if I go to Settings and click on Student View and then go back to the Zoom tab that the students can't see your account settings. All they will see is whatever upcoming meetings, previous meetings, or cloud recordings are available. So from here, we can schedule a meeting. Add in your topic, meeting description, set a time for when you want to do it, your duration, and then the regular controls for your Zoom meeting. Click on Save. Right from here, you can either delete, edit, start the meeting, or you can go back to the Zoom tab and then see how that meeting will be set up. You can now start this meeting from the app or from your web login by entering the meeting ID or by hitting the start button. Keep in mind that as soon as you create a meeting in Zoom, students will get notification of this upcoming meeting. I'm going to start the meeting just to show you how to do cloud recordings within this meeting. Start my video up here. Under record down here, you can either record on your computer or record under the cloud. We're going to do the cloud now so that we can see how this works in Canvas. You can see now in the top left hand corner it says that it's recording. We are now recording and this will end up in Canvas. I'm going to stop the recording. It will tell me that it will email me when the recording is ready. And I'm going to end my meeting. Now when I go back to my Zoom tab here, I see the Canvas training. And I don't see anything yet on the cloud recording because it's not uh, ready to go yet. But I will come back to this tab in a couple minutes so I can show you what that would look like. If I click on my upcoming meetings in my web interface, I can see now that the Canvas training is set for an upcoming meeting. Now back in Canvas, we can check to see if the cloud recording is done. You should get a, a notice like this from Zoom when your recording is processed. And now we can click back in Canvas to see if it's there. If it's not there right away, don't worry. It takes a little bit of time for the recordings to get processed and it all depends on uh, how many other files are being done at that day. Now we can see 
Here's our cloud recording, our Canvas training that we did, what time it was recorded. Um, we can either publish it or unpublish it, so that's a nice feature and that um, we may not necessarily want to record and publish everything that we record using this, this meeting. We can also delete it, of course. If we click on there, it will give us an option to be able to download, share individually, either the recording or just the audio. When we click on there, it will basically take us into our, our account so that we can preview See now the, the recording. Button. Speaking of, if you go back to your account, you can uh, click on recordings and from there see what other recordings that you have available. In your account, when you click on the recording, you get a little bit more information than you did from the Zoom interface. And in this information, you can see that the audio transcript is now transcribing. This is one of the great features of using uh, the cloud recording for Zoom in Canvas is that it automatically creates an auto transcript. Now, it's not perfect. It's a AI computer transcript, but at least it's something. And it gives you uh, something that you can at least alongside of your video have in terms of a transcript for those that need it. We'll check back in a little bit once that transcript is finished to see what that looks like. Now back in Canvas, the other thing that we can do on the Zoom tab here, we click on there, is to set up a meeting that doesn't necessarily have a time. So we could schedule a new meeting. So we call it the same thing. I can call it a recurring meeting. Instead of a daily recurrence, I can click on no fixed time. This then creates uh, a meeting that doesn't communicate to your students that it's at a particular time, but it is still housed in your Canvas shell. When I click on Save, then I can go back to my Zoom tab, and now I have multiple meetings. Notice that every time a meeting is created in uh, your Canvas shell, uh, using it this way, I've got the same name, on it, but it has different meeting IDs. This is actually a pretty good idea um, so that you're not using the same ID all the time. Um, it's good to switch it up from a security standpoint so that a, a Zoom ID isn't just kind of getting out there that anybody can click on and use. Let's check back on the account to see if the transcription is done now. The transcription is taking too long, so I'm going to show you the transcription on one of my other ones here, see how it works. Uh, you can click on the transcription and you can see that it downloads into a transcription file that you could upload somewhere else. Over here, you can uh, also link to the transcription or delete it. And um, it also means though that now that the transcription is there, when you play the video hey, this is and show the subtitles, it actually has a transcription a for the subtitles. You want me later today? The other thing is, if you go to see how the shared screen with speaker view looks, hey, this is it will show test. the transcription on the right-hand side. And people can also search a transcription. Uh, this is a pretty cool feature, I think, in terms of uh, watching as uh, videos. You know, with, with the transcription is one of those situations where an accessible video like this is just good design for everybody because there may be people in situations that can't listen to you, but they could read what you have to say. Now we'll go back and see what this looks like for the students now that we've created two meetings. And we have one cloud video up there. Click on the student view. Scroll down. Click on Zoom. And now you can see we've got a recurring meeting in the upcoming meetings because the other one has passed. We've got our previous meeting. And then we have our one cloud recording that we have um, listed there. Once uh, the transcription is available, then it will, it will pop up here as well or uh, pop up here during the recording. Well, I hope that was helpful to you. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions at all.